Okay, good afternoon, and thank you for the introduction. It's a pleasure to introduce to you the iQueens project. So iQueens goes for uh, integrated quantum information at the nanoscale. It's a project which is supported by EZIT uh, BFC since 2017. We are a group of 18 researchers, and we work in five different research units of UBFC, ECB, FEMTO, UTNAM, and the two math departments, IMB and LMB. And we are located in three sites, uh, Belfort, Besançon, and Dijon. And when we designed this project three years ago, uh, we had a double ambition. The first ambition was to propose a coherent scientific program on quantum information at the level of UBFC, and also to build a multidisciplinary community of researchers working in, on, on the field. So, oops, sorry, this is very sensitive. Yeah, so maybe uh, a few words about what quantum information is. So this is a very short talk, so I will just take one slide to give you an idea of what quantum information is. Quantum information uh, starts when two of the main scientific revolutions of the 20th century meet, uh, namely quantum mechanics and, and information theory. And the aim of quantum uh, information is to uh, develop some new qu information processing based on the property of quantum physics, and especially the non-classical property of quantum physics. So to give you just an illustration or an example of what quantum information is, um, I give the, 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 the so does it work? Oh, yeah. Okay, the picture of a bit and a qubit. In classical information theory, the basic unit of information is the bit, and it only takes two discrete, oh, sorry, I cannot see, oh, two discrete value, zero and one. But in quantum information theory, the bas basic unit of information is what we call the quantum bit, and it's a quantum state with two basis states. And the rules of quantum mechanics tell us that the quantum states with only two basis states, zero and one, can be in a superposition of these two uh, basis states. And we see that we go from the world of uh, discrete information to something which is infinite and continuous. Of course, there is much more to say to explain the world story, but it, it, because there is some problem with measurements and how to manipulate this kind of stuff, but uh, it gives you an idea of the difference between information in the classical world and possible information in the quantum world. And the promises of quantum information are more secure communication. We call it uh, quantum communication protocols, stronger computational resources. You probably all have heard about uh, quantum computers, but it, it has also some application in the managing of uh, energetic resources. So three years ago, when we uh, designed a scientific project uh, in UBFC about quantum information, it was obviously based on uh, the regional skills. And we identified three main axes. The first axis was called geometry for quantum computation. And you will find here, essentially, uh, people with mathematical or computer scientific background. Uh, when we, in this topic, we essentially work with tensors. So quantum state are tensors, operators are matrices. So it's uh, very easy, everything takes place on papers and we can describe quantum algorithm and study some quantum properties like entanglement and contextuality in this formalism. But if we want to do uh, real quantum computing, we need also a strong uh, physical and, and theoretical uh, foundation and this is what's um, the topic two of our project, which is quantum control. You have to imagine that quantum systems are very delicate and fragile objects because essentially of the environment and you need some strong uh, physical, uh, theoretical physics background and foundation to describe the possible interaction and how you are going to manipulate uh, these quantum states. And finally, in the last uh, two days of this uh, uh, EZIT UBFC meetings, we have seen that uh, at UBFC we have, some, we have the chance to have some uh, important skills in quantum optics. And well, we hope in this project to demonstrate that uh, um, quantum plasmonics and quantum optics are a very good candidate to uh, support uh, quantum information and the development of the corresponding development of quantum technology. So in the next three slides, I will give some example of realization that we did over the last three years. 
it's not exhaustive, but I try to um, give some representation of the type of question we have been asking in the different topics of this project. So here, for instance, this is what I was working on at the beginning of the project. Uh, someone like Michel Plana Fento Este also was interested by this type of picture. This very nice uh, geometric configuration is in fact uh, a, a configuration of 633 points and 633 line. And it turns out that this encode some commutation relation of the three qubit polygroup, which is useful in quantum information. And you can see that there are some symmetry behind this picture. And using the symmetry and group theory, we were about to prove that uh, there is a certain number of Koran Specker proof based on three qubit operator, which can be described. And we have some geometric interpretation of this. The second picture comes from a project by a postdoc student who was hired at the beginning of the, uh, of the, of the project. He was supervised by uh, Bruno Bellomo at Utinam and, and Dominique Suni at ECB. And uh, the idea was to study the interaction of, single, of a single qubit with the environment. As I said before, when you try to do quantum control, you're afraid of the environment which may destroy the, the quantum property of your system. But uh, the idea that they had was, in fact, the opposite, how to use the environment to uh, achieve the transformation we try to, to, to implement. And this is what we call uh, reservoir engineering. And finally, the last uh, illustration is a joint project between two departments of ECB. And it represents some studies, theoretical studies on uh, quantum plasmonic up to the production of some nano antenna, antenna to produce single photon source. In these second slides, there are three more projects uh, conducted uh, within iQueens. Uh, once we have some geometric and algebraic tools to describe the entanglement in quantum state, we can try to apply these tools to analyze what's going on through a quantum algorithm. So these circuits represent a quantum algorithm. You have to imagine you have a tensor at the beginning, and after each step, the nature of the tensor, its entanglement classes, its quantum properties change. And with the tools we have developed, the, the abstract mathematical tools we have developed, we can measure uh, the entanglement. And this is, in fact, the PhD uh, subject of my student, Hamza Shafali, who is defending in two days uh, in his PhD in Belfort. Uh, this is another uh, study by postdoc students, also supervised by uh, Bruno Bellomo and Dominique Suni, about controlling uh, atoms in cavity by external fields. And here, we saw in the previous slide that we can produce at UBFE single photon source. Here's an experiment about, uh, which was conducted by Mathieu Chauvet at FEMTO and about detecting single photon. And here the photon in the mid-infrared um, spectrum. Uh, this is more recent works. Um, the, the first picture illustrates another project of my student because we had this algebraic equation to define these quantum properties such as entanglement, my student got this idea of using machine learning techniques to teach the machine how to recognize this algebraic equation and how to find such equation, even in the case that we cannot calculate it. And he conducted this project with uh, an algebraic geometer in the United States, Luke Oding, and they published a nice paper in quantum information processing a few months ago. This picture illustrates another work of Dominique Suni about the tennis racket effect. When you throw a racket, it rotates, but there is also a flip. And they uh, find some geometric interpretation of this phenomena uh, using Riemann surfaces. And uh, amazingly, this has some application to quantum control as well. And this last uh, picture represents an experiment conducted at fem 2 FST by um, Fabrice Deveau and Eric uh, Lance. Uh, regarding the, the correlation between uh, twin uh, entangled photon through uh, ang hu mandel interferometers. And the novelty of their research is the fact that they were working in high dimension. There was 1,500 spatial modes, uh, something like 1,000 uh, temporal uh, mode as well. So it was a, uh, almost a million dimension systems. And they were able to, uh, uh, to, to show the, that the correlation was uh, indeed, the one predicted by quantum uh, mechanics. So as I said at the beginning, the objective of uh, the iQueens project was double. 
One was to conduct some research on quantum information and, 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 and to present this research at the, the UBFC uh, uh, level, but we also wanted to um, create and build a community of people interested in the subject, and in this sense, the IZIT project helped us because it helped us to, to, to get, get stronger relation uh, among ourselves inside our community. We organized some joint meetings. We co-supervised some PhDs, and we also co-supervised some postdocs dif between different institutes. By inviting uh, researchers from abroad, we were able also to have stronger international collaboration. And as a byproduct, we, our project also had some impact on the training program at UBFC because now there is at least three courses on quantum information. One is teach at UTBM in the computer science engineering degree, one in the is it master PPN, and one in the graduate school for PhD students. And when I mean quantum information course, it's not the course on quantum physics, which mentioned quantum information. It's really a course where we are going to teach quantum algorithm to students and eventually implement some quantum algorithm on simulators. Finally, a couple of perspectives. Um, at the end of the project, it appears to us that there is some new direction to take, especially to, uh, in the direction of computer science. Alain Georgetti from FEMTO, uh, who is a member of the project, point out the interest in defining formal proof and verification of quantum algorithm, and we have a PhD uh, program ongoing on this. Uh, the, we used machine learning techniques for studying entanglement at the mathematical level, but maybe it could be used also for uh, developing uh, quantum control. And as I tried to show you, we have some platform to uh, do quantum computation, to produce single photon sources, detectors, entangled photon. What about trying to implement some uh, small quantum algorithm, quantum protocols? There is a currently submitted project by some member of the group on quantum technology and energy. And there is also some ongoing uh, collaboration between uh, Femto, ST, and Aurea Technology. Aurea Technology is a company which sells, produce, and sells uh, photon sources and photon detector. I have just one uh, slide left to summarize our project in some figures. Um, so Equins is an active group publishing uh, papers and, and, and defending their work in, in conferences. Thanks to the project, we organized some meetings and workshops uh, internationals. We invited 11 PhD students, uh, sorry, we trained 11 PhD students uh, within this program, and, and three of our colleagues uh, got their habilitation since 2017. And there are seven more projects which were uh, uh, validated on quantum information since 2017. It was not project uh, supported by the whole consortium, more like small groups, sometimes only one researcher, but it shows how uh, we are active on the field. And more important than figures are people. And um, so this is a list of the 18 uh, uh, permanent researchers which are members of our group, according to the institute. So if you work on the first axis one of EASIT, you probably know some of the, these people. I should have had the list of students, but I didn't have enough room. And I would like to thank my, my collaborator who helped me to write this project three years ago and most importantly, helped me to, to, to run the project since three years. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. So it's probably a very good example of what we can do together and that we are stronger at the level of UBFC than, than alone together. Yeah, yeah. What, what was cl clear? Just one question. Oh. Yeah, you can, yeah, you can comment if you want. No, just to, 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 to your remark, what was clear when we, we, we wrote this project three years ago is that none of the five research institutes involved could say that they cover all aspects of quantum information. But when we gather the five of us, we see that the variety of topics on quantum information that we are capable of addressing is quite interesting. Um, in your second or third slide, you write that uh, it may imply a better optimization of the energetical resources. I don't see how. Well, Maybe. there is, uh, so, okay, so, the, so I was referring to this project that Stefan uh, submitted a uh, few uh, very recently. Um, so 
the best thing is to ask Stefan what he has in mind, but I can still give you a, an answer. Um, what we think is that there is some phenomena at the uh, atomic level that nature is capable of doing, but we cannot do it in the industry on, in the classical world, like synthesis of certain uh, molecules or proteins. And with a quantum computer, for instance, there is some hope that this process could be at least simulated and understood. And I think that in the project by Stefan, there is something about photosynthesis which is uh, um, uh, proposed uh, in, this, in this project. 